This is going to be another comprehensive video about uh, DC motor position control uh, using PID controller. Uh, in this case, we'll send our desired uh, trajectory, which is the reference signal, using this potentiometer to control the position of this DC motor. This motor also has a potentiometer at the back for sensing the position. That's our feedback sensor, basically. And just got a little setup here. So we can look at the parts here. I have a little CAD model here that kind of shows the components that were used. Uh, the shaft coupler, the potentiometer at the back, and then there's an overlay just to show the degrees, the position, the angular position of that. I'll upload the CAD model as well uh, if you guys want to use it. Uh, let's take a, a quick look at the block diagram. So we have a reference signal uh, coming from a reference potentiometer. Uh, going into another block, uh, we'll just call this block uh, PID. So this is where our controlling function is, which is sending the voltage to the DC motor uh, to control its position. And from there, we can also do a loop back, all the way back. This is uh, going to come from our feedback potentiometer. Uh, so we'll basically send a feedback signal so we can calculate the error. Based on that error, the PID will be able to control the DC motor position. So our input is the reference potentiometer. Let's also quickly go over the potentiometer that we're using. This is a rotary potentiometer. Uh, it has variable resistance. Basically, there's a VN. We're going to input 5 volts to it, and there's a ground. And then it will uh, the middle pin will send the voltage out. Uh, that will change based on the uh, angular position of the potentiometer based on its resistance. So in Arduino, there is a analog read function for UNO. The operating voltage is 5 volts, and we'll hook up uh, our potentiometer to one of these analog pins. Uh, the resolution, 10 bits, is basically means uh, it's 2 to the power of 10, which is basically 1024. That's the resolution, and if you divide 5 volts by 1024, uh, each of that unit is equal to 4.9 millivolts. And um, so what that means is if the potentiometer is outputting 0, that means 0 volts. Uh, and if it's sending 512, you know, there's 2.5 volts. And if it's doing 1024, which is basically 1023 because it goes from 0, 0 is included, 0 to 1023 uh, scale. So 1023 will be 5 volts. So next uh, we'll go over the PID formulation. So what's PID? Uh, PID is basically a proportional integrator and a derivative uh, of the error. And what is error exactly? So let's say if you have a function, uh, ut, and uh, there's time there, and uh, this is this is our a desired trajectory. In this case, it's a step function, and uh, this is our actual uh, component. Could be a motor or a different sensor or some kind of component uh, trying to follow that trajectory. Let's say it goes and it gets it it gets, starts moving away from the red line and at that point just just for example say go we'll say that from that point and on the blue line and to the red line the difference between those two points is basically is our error so our controller will basically calculate the error use that error to move close and close to the red line and at every point it will basically calculate the error and try to get closer and closer and closer to the red line. And eventually it will reach a steady state. This is where our gain values for these controllers come into play. So if our gain values are correct or appropriate, then we can reduce the time it takes to get to the steady state and less of a shoot, undershoot or overshoot. So let's go over the PID formulation. So let's say we have this a UT. Uh, this is our controlling function, this is what we're going to control. And uh, we'll have the gain of proportional controller multiplied by the error at point uh, K. Um, so let me just change this T to K as well. So we're talking, uh, we'll do this in discrete time with K. 
decay index. And now we'll add the integrator controller to that. So we'll um, add we'll we'll write the uh, gain for integrator times the integration of the error with respect to t plus the gain of derivative controller times the derivative of the error. And basically the integration takes the past data, the derivative takes the future data, and the KP is the present. So the proportional controller is pretty simple. You just multiply the gain uh, to the error that you're going to calculate based on the difference between the actual trajectory and the, um, the desired trajectory. Uh, let's look at the integration uh, controller, like how we're going to integrate the error. So we'll use the trapezoidal method to calculate this. So just overview of a trapezoidal method is basically you have a graph here, you have a curve, and uh, let's say there are two points on this curve. Let's say this one's k, this one's k minus 1. And uh, the distance between those is delta t. That's our time step. Uh, and uh, let's say we, the, the integration is basically just the area under the curve. I mean, you can use the rectangular method. Basically just, you know, finding the uh, highest point and just multiplying by the uh, delta t to find the rectangle. But we're going to use the trapezoidal. So we'll find a slope line from... Uh, from those two points and find the average point and multiply by the t to find the a um, little more accurate area under the curve. So the way you're going to write that in the Arduino is let's say you define a variable int integration error at point k. So you will write that equal to integration error k minus 1, the previous error, plus uh, e uh, the error at k plus error at k minus 1 over 2. This is basically the average of that red line. And multiply with the delta t to find the area under the curve. And uh, the way you're going to find the derivative controller, we're going to find the derivative of the error, is using the backward difference method. Uh, there's a whole video on my channel that talks about different differences method, um, how to use those. Uh, maybe take a look if you get a chance. Uh, so you take the error, derivative of the error is basically just the error at point k minus the error at previous point, which is k minus 1, over the time step, the delta t. So this is basically our formulation that we're going to use in the code. The That integration equation and this uh, derivative equation. So let's start with the code. I'm going to delete these lines. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my potentiometer pins. Pod pin is basically my uh, reference potentiometer. The encoder pod is my feedback potentiometer that's on the motor. So we'll use the analog pins A3 and A2 for those. And uh, then you define a couple other variables. Uh, this is what we're going to use to store the values that we're going to read from these potentiometer. So we'll define those inside the main loop, our void loop function. And uh, then you want to define your um, Billy's function. This is a uh, built-in time function. Also your delta t, which is t minus t previous. So delta t is our time step. Uh, we'll define all those variables. Let's also define data, the angle. Uh, and also the desired angle that we're looking for, which is theta d. And uh, we're going to define these up uh, as a float variable and also the time step as an energy variable. And then we'll also define error, which is theta d minus theta, which is desired minus the actual angle. And we'll take the integration of that error using the backward difference method that we looked at. Um, and then you want to write your controlling function, which is a voltage function. Kp is gain for the proportional controller, which uh, multiplied by the error. Similarly, you do the 
uh, gain for integration and then times the integration of error then you would also add that to the uh, derivative gain times the derivative of the error uh, we'll also define some other variables here uh, our, when we're using the tt previous and also the value previous we'll also define the error variables as float initialize the previous ones to zero and then we're going to do a piece of code for integrator anti windup basically if some case the the voltage goes over the voltage max value the the integrator error will set to the previous integrator uh, and that will be used in the controlling function so you don't constantly output voltage max then we want to write that voltage to the motor driver so we'll use this function here in this function v and v max are input arguments v is coming from a controlling function from the main loop and v max we have defined already and then you sort of map uh, the 8-bit scale that's 0 to 255 value to our voltage range whatever our, the voltage range is 0 to 12 volts or 0 to 6 volts and just in case uh, the PWM value goes over 255 just make sure you reset it to uh, 255 that's what this, this this function does and then we'll set the direction of the motor uh, if the voltage is less than 0 or greater than 0 it will rotate in certain direction less than certain direction and uh, if there is no voltage, uh, the, vo uh, the motor won't rotate. And then we'll write this PWM value to our PWM pin on the Arduino. Then we want to declare the voltage max and voltage min, and the just initialize the voltage, and then also define our PWM in the direction pin. Now let's set up the serial begin and the set the direction pins or output and we also have to define the gain values for our derivative proportional and uh, integrator so let's define that I've already kind of tested this and figured out these values work well with this setup but based on your setup what the system is those values will change so you can kind of get it through trial and error if you would like let's also print the angular position values uh, which is theta desired and theta so we'll just print these on the serial monitor just to track what's going on and then make sure you set the t previous to the t that we got from current loop and same thing for the integrator and the error and then we'll put a delay of 10 millisecond and then uh, we'll just upload the code and hopefully it compiles it done uploading and then we'll do the test now so let's look at our test assembly setup here that's my reference potentiometer that's my DC motor assembly with a dual shaft DC motor with a coupler hooked up to a potentiometer at the back. That's a rotary potentiometer for feedback sensing. And that's my 3D printed frame. And in the front, there are like two knobs there just to show the angular position side by side. And uh, let's test it. So I have a serial plotter open as well to show the trajectories. So the blue one is our reference and the red one is the actual motor position so I'm rotating it and you can see the DC motor is following that position and stopping there so the motor is making a lot of noise because it's receiving some voltage at all times it's constantly on basically uh, because of the derivative gain and uh, uh, those gain values are the best I could do for the way it's tracking right now that's the best performance I could get. Uh, if you guys want to play around, uh, I'm going to upload the code, of course, and uh, then you guys can play with the gain values and see uh, if you guys can make this better or or whatever you guys want to do. But it's tracking pretty good. Uh, at the end, uh, I'm going to show a little application that you can use this setup in. Uh, I used it on my project before. So this is one application, basically the steering wheel for a lane assist system project, uh, basically controlling the car to stay within the lane while controlling the angular position of the steering wheel. And uh, I'm using potentiometer here. This is basically gutted uh, off the shelf uh, steering wheel with components in there. And you can see the potentiometer right there is changing as you rotate the steering wheel so that was my feedback sensor for steering angle 
and uh, it worked out pretty well. Hopefully this video was helpful and I'm going to upload the code on my website. I'll post the link below and uh, thank you for watching.